in all the therapy areas where we operate, we always try to uh, keep the patient at the center and try and work at uh, areas through which we can address the challenge of the disease in a very comprehensive manner. Uh, we have done that in the space of diabetes. Uh, like for example, we have a counseling center called SPARSH where we try to guide the patient on uh, management of diabetes in a holistic fashion, whether it is diet, exercise, frequency with which he has to take the guidance from the treating physician, monitoring the blood glucose. Because what we believe is that uh, if you have to get a good comprehensive you know, control of diabetes, uh, it's not just medicine alone. You need to change the lifestyle. You have to manage your diet carefully. You have to exercise. And if you do that in a comprehensive manner, the outcome is going to be better. We have done a similar type of a work in the space of, uh, you know, hepatitis C, where we are trying to work on uh, increasing the awareness, increasing the, uh, you know, the diagnosis rate, uh, also trying to address the economic challenges, you know, through a microfinancing route. So it was in a similar fashion that uh, one of the challenges that we have uh, is antimicrobial resistance. So the whole idea was that how can we try and work with the institutions so that in a very structured fashion, uh, one can develop a protocol-based approach in the management of infectious diseases. And it's thanks to my uh, medical team, uh, which has uh, worked with over 100 institutions across the country. Uh, they spend about six to nine months in each of the institution working along with the microbiologist, working with the intensivists, working with the administrative staff of the hospital and trying to create and try to create a very well structured uh, you know, protocol uh, for that particular institution. Uh, what will happen in the process is that uh, there will be a much better and rational use of antibiotics and uh, whether it is dosing, the choice of antibiotics uh, and the duration for which you need to give the treatment, it, those things will happen in a very structured fashion. And we believe through this route, the incidence or the rate at which the resistance is developing would probably slow down. So that's what is this antimicrobial stewardship program all about. We have gone one step further now. We have created an app because almost every physician has, uh, you know, a mobile today. And uh, through this app, it becomes uh, very convenient and comfortable for the phys physician to, uh, to know, you know, uh, what antibiotic to use in uh, which condition, in what dosage. It's a very simple, basic tool that has been uh, created and today available in these institutions. The program for antimicrobial stewardship is to address a big challenge in India and perhaps all across the world of growing antibiotic resistance or antimicrobial resistance and less number of antibiotics or antimicrobials being developed and put into the marketplace every year. So we know the big issue. So this program of antimicrobial stewardship um, is a very simple program um, because it's clearly not uh, identifying the, the third helix of the DNA. It's a very structured program in which we just simplify. Uh, we take from book to bedside, right? And what we've done is to follow the CDC protocol, uh, which is the Center for Disease Control. And uh, we've tried to um, operationalize it for the local data for the hospital because in nosocomial infection, it's the local data that matters. So what we do is we take the five different infection types, which uh, account for 98, 99% of the infections. And for each of these infection types, we triage the data into ward and ICU. And we, 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 we structure it in terms of what are the number percentage pathogens and the resistance to antibiotics across this. Uh, over a period of time. So we collect a N sample of a given number, which is required to be statistically significant. What this program does is allows the doctor to choose the right antibiotic empirically. So for the first 48 hours before the 
blood test report comes back or the, uh, the microbiology report comes back, the doctor is choosing the right antibiotic or the right antimicrobial to treat the patient. Thereafter, what the program focuses on is once you get the report, you need to de-escalate uh, or you need to escalate or you need to stop, right? And that closes the loop. So what we are finding is that as we uh, implement this, uh, there's a lot of stakeholder management. You need to make sure that the microbiologist is actively engaged and his or her voice is heard within the hospital. Um, and, uh, and is looked upon as the thought leader of what should be the treatment paradigm for antibiotics. Uh, you need to make sure that the, the management fully endorses this program because um, you need uh, the, the consultants who may be linked to the hospital or may be coming from external consultants into the hospital all follow it as a protocol because all protocols need to be adopted. And you need to make sure that um, once you get the microbiology report, there is monitoring that, you know, did they de-escalate, escalate, or stop the antibiotic? Is there monitoring to make sure it's actually working, right? So that was one part of it. So when we started it, it was a paper-based version. And the paper-based version has obviously its own challenges insofar as uh, access, ready access. It's not a ready reckoner. So what we've done now with this program is to evolve it into an electronic format. Uh, which allows on a click of a button to, for every doctor uh, in the hospital to see what is the ecology of the hospital and then choose the right antibiotic. Just makes it simpler. You can't have the excuse, oh, I don't know where the book is or I don't know where the data resides. It's always with you. So we've done that. And the second very important point is we've added to this program an outcomes measure, which is the drug resistance index, which tells you um, based on the antibiogram and the uh, usage of the antibiotic, what is the treatability of an infection type in that hospital. So you me measure it over time, and that number varies between 0 and 1. So it's very easily understood at the management level uh, of where you're going with the, um, the quality in terms of treatability of infection and the infection control within the hospital. So let me just uh, no, give you certain uh, facts and figures which will help you. Uh, one is the, the majority of the time when the antibiotics are usually introduced in India, uh, very, within a very short span, the resistance starts developing to those antibiotics compared to the Western worlds and the develop, developed worlds, mainly because of the use of the antibiotic either uh, extensively or irrationally or sometimes to a suboptimal level. Uh, what we have observed in, from a certain uh, scientific study that has been conducted, uh, that within the two to three years time frame, the resistance level to a newly introduced antibiotic reaches to a level of 25 to 30 percent uh, versus a, a global data where we have seen that the same the antibiotics normally have a very constant level of a resistance of around five to seven percent over a period of 10 years. So that's the one of the challenge that we have in terms of the antibiotic resistance. Now coming to us the, the key question is that how do we control those antibiotic uh, resistance that we have in, in India? Uh, there are two key components that we really have to control it. Uh, specifically for the first one is that because we know that there are no new antibiotics going to get it into the, mark, into the research area, which indirectly forces the physicians to use the existing antibiotic. And the second, how do I rationalize the use of an antibiotic, what is available today, and hence this program that we have initiated under the uh, banner of antimicrobial stewardship program that really helps the physicians to identify and rationalize the use of the antibiotic from the point of a selecting the antibiotic based on the, the ecosystem or the microbiological pattern that exists in their hospitals and also from the type of the antibiotic usage that have to be uh, uh, selected for treating the critically ill patients coming to the ICU departments. The, what it helps really is one in terms of rationalization of the dose, rationalization, rationalization of selections of the antibiotic and that two things over a period of time will help to curtail the antibiotic resistance going forward. We not be able to eliminate it, but definitely we could able to make and reduce the antibiotic resistance prevailing into the hospital setup. And that's the purpose of the running the antibiotic stewardship program, which is a structured developed protocol based on the, the ecosystem and the microbiological pattern in the hospital.